this is T.I. I know you're busy, but um, would you come preach for me? And she opened up her book right there, said, let me give you my number, send me a text, get a date. So we set today, and uh, I'm, I'm so excited. I, I'm just, I know God has a word for this church. Church, we are in a pivotal time for our service in our church. When Tuesday night in prayer meeting, there was an, just an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that came and invaded this place. God's Spirit began to move, and there were many that were prayed for. There was miracles. Brother David's in a spiritual battle right now, and I know God blessed him and is continuing, but we're going to press forward in Jesus' name. And so right now, I know Sister Shaw has got a timely word for this congregation, for this church. And I believe with all my heart, Sister Shaw, we don't want to take any more time. We want you to come. We want to give you all the time. She asked me, Pastor, how long do you want me to go? How long do you want me to go? I'm usually done by 1.30. We leave at 2. But um, but I told her, I said, just obey the Holy Ghost. If we're here till 5 o'clock, that's okay with me. Doesn't the Bible say they that wait upon the Lord? It didn't say how long. But I, I'm just teasing with you. But could we just lift our hands right now as she comes to this stage? And she brings a word from the Lord this morning. Would you just lift your hands and let's just pray right now. God, we release in this place a supernatural prophetic word in the name of Jesus. We give you praise this morning, God, for all that you are doing, for all that you have done. And Lord, we just open up our hearts right now and our minds, and we pray, God, that you would just begin to move. If those that are here this morning that are not saved, God, that, Lord, you would just speak salvation unto them. God, that your anointing, I plead the blood of Jesus over this service. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's give Lord a shout of praise. Isn't God worthy of all the praise and glory? Amen. Indeed, he is. I uh, want to thank God for allowing me to be here in Red Oak, Texas. This is my first time in this city. Uh, what I've seen is beautiful. What I feel in the spirit is a wonderful spirit to be with the family of God in the presence of God. Amen. And what a great pastor, pastor's wife you have. Amen. It's a beautiful facility as well. God has blessed you. And, uh, and he's going to continue to bless and do greater things. So I first want to honor God. I always honor my husband in his absence. Uh, he pastors a growing church in the Austin area. Uh, we started as a daughter work of New Life Austin, Bishop David Bernard and uh, then went into home mission status. Now we're considered as a sister work. And so it's just so great to be able to serve in the kingdom of God. Uh, my husband is bivocational. He's a full-time pastor and a full-time police officer. Amen. And so he, <laughs> he serves in many ways. He loves people. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor uh, and Sister Dansby, thank you. Wasn't this praise and worship amazing? This was awesome. I appreciate everything that I see and what I feel in this place. I also want to honor uh, Brother Gordon Winslow in his absence, and of course, Sister Winslow is here. They're wonderful. We have been praying uh, for Brother Winslow. Uh, in fact, I know we had prayer and we prayed for him, but I feel to do something special if you'd permit me, Pastor. Sister Winslow, if you would not mind to come and stand in proxy. I've been having such a burden <laughs> for Brother Winslow, and we all love him. And people across this fellowship love him. In fact, I was speaking with uh, Bishop Stan Gleason yesterday in the aftermath of General Conference and uh, 
And he said that they've been praying for Brother Winslow, and I think at one point he literally called him and his son, and they prayed with him. And then I spoke with someone else, uh, actually a sister in Houston, Sister Michelle Boudreaux in South Texas, works with Prayer Ministry. <laughs> and they have been praying just all over our fellowship. I've been hearing that we've been praying for Brother Winslow. And so I know that God answers prayer. I know that God hears according to his will. So I have a prayer cloth. Ladies from New York, if you would give this with Sister Winslow, to Sister Winslow, uh, from uh, a group of ladies from New York City were at conference. They cut thousands of prayer cloths, anointed these, the ministry anointed these, they prayed over these, fasted over these, and brought them to general conference. And I felt to take one out so Sister Winslow could give to Brother Winslow. And so as she stands in proxy for him, let's pray and believe God for a miracle. I know we have to pray according to his will, but we're praying for a miracle according to his will. So join with me now in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you on behalf, oh God. <laughs> of Prophet Winslow, Lord God, if you would stretch forth your hands, oh God, and heal, Lord. You are the balm of Gilead. By your stripes, oh God, your word says he is healed, oh God. Oh Lord, we pray, oh God, that you would release your healing virtue. You are the balm of Gilead. You are the Lord, our God, that healeth according to your will, oh God. We pray, we believe for a miracle, God. Let your anointing power rest upon this cloth, oh God, and let your purpose be fulfilled. We lift them up before your throne of grace even now as we touch and agree together. God, all the prayers, let them culminate, oh God, to your throne room right now. And we pray, God, that you, Lord, would grant mercy and grace and favor and healing and a miracle in the name of Jesus. And we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Everything is in the hands of God. And he does all things well. Amen. Praise God. Amen. With that being said, I also want to greet you on behalf of World Network of Prayer. Feel free to take advantage of the resources on our website at WNOP.org. And... Um, we are here to serve in the ministry of prayer. If you have any prayer requests, submit these on our website or on Facebook. We have over 30,000 followers, and people around the world will pray for you. We have seen miracles unto the glory of God. Amen. So we are here to serve in prayer ministry. I have enjoyed everything that has transpired here. Such a wonderful presence of God. Now I believe uh, that God has given me, I know God has given me a specific word for this church. Amen. So if you would turn your attention with me to the word of God, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and and two. And it reads, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Praise God. Pastor Dansby, please lift up your voice and pray over the word this morning. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for your word. 
God, we receive the word that is about to go forth into this house. I pray that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. And God, we are going to just receive, devour, and leave this place under the unction and the anointing of your presence. In Jesus' name, bless it, anoint Sister Shaw. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. I would like to entitle this message, Arise. Arise. I would like for you to tell someone next to you, tell them, say, Arise. Tell someone else, Arise. This is the specific word that the Lord gave me for Revival Center here. I was in prayer, and I thought maybe I would go another direction. But throughout the week, God kept speaking the word to me, arise. Why? It's because you are going to arise to new places in him in various areas according to scripture. Amen. I don't care what situation you're in, what you're facing, what you are desiring, what you are aspiring to, God is telling you to arise because he has something for you today. Do you believe it? Amen. Arise means to come to light, to emerge from a problem or situation, to get up a result. This was a prophecy of Isaiah as he prophesied the church glory in the access of the Gentiles uh, in the Old Testament to be God's chosen few. Uh, during that time, you had to be born as a Jew. But in the New Testament, to God's chosen few, one must be born again. He or she must be born again to be in the family of God. Amen. And since we are children of God, scripturally, the Bible says we can arise and shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. Amen. And so we know in John 8, uh, verse 12, uh, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Amen. And so God wants our light to shine, and he wants us to arise and to make a difference in the world. Now, we have the Spirit of God in us. Amen. And when you go deeper into prayer and deeper into the things of God, God is taking you to heavenly places. He wants us to be seated in heavenly places. Amen. In Christ Jesus. Because when you arise, you begin to be lifted above your situations, your problems, God will place you in a dimension of faith. Now, we know this in the spiritual. You know what's interesting? I have a sister who's worked for NASA for over 30 years, and she's over a team of about 18 engineers. Initially, she started working on the space station, and um, and I have, I've had an opportunity to go to NASA, personally meet astronauts and have a private tour, et cetera. Now, one thing that she told us, and it's so interesting because all of this is documented. Some of it is more public than uh, other parts of the information. But don't you know when astronauts go up into space, when they arise, when they go to a higher level, their backbone actually expands an inch because of the gravitational pull. And so how does that translate to us? You know, when you go higher in Christ, amen, that means you have more backbone to overcome anything that the enemy throws at you. One thing that they have discovered scientifically is that as some astronauts 
or atheists. They actually go into space not believing in God. But when they come back down, they become believers because once they break through a certain area of the atmosphere, they have reported feeling the presence of God and knowing that there has to be a God. Some of them have actually written, and my sister has shown me this, that they have seen sightings of angels. Can you believe that? And so if someone in the world who is not yet filled with the Holy Ghost, praise God, can know that there is a God and feel the presence of God and believe him, how much more should we? I was talking to Brother Lee Stone King the other day. Uh, uh, he was going to speak uh, for us online or through live stream for ABI, uh, Apostolic Bible Institute. And he was sharing with me some of his research. And we talked about this because I was like, oh, my goodness, well, my sister knows about this research. He researched it himself. But he found out something else that's interesting. And you know what's amazing? This is not even in my notes. I don't even know where I'm going here. But anyway, God wants us to go higher. That's where you are going in the spirit. Anyway, he said that astronauts also have reported about six feet from uh, the, the surface of the Earth's atmosphere when you leave it. Six feet above that is when they start feeling the presence of God. And if you think about it, the Bible says that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. When he was cast down from heaven, God allowed him to be the prince and the power of this earthly atmosphere. But uh, he has a ceiling. He cannot go, praise God, beyond to the heavenly realms. Even Paul talks about the third, fourth, and fifth heaven. And so there are places when you arise, and that's what I feel in the spirit. This church is arising to new levels in the Holy Ghost that the devil cannot defeat you. I don't care what you are going through. Praise God. Hallelujah. And one thing that Brother Stone King found out, what helps you to get into that dimension when you arise in the spiritual realm is praise and worship. When you begin to praise and worship God, it shreds the atmosphere of the enemy. And you can break through in those heavenly realms. You can break through in prayer, in faith, in the miraculous Whatever you need, you can break through. Somebody shout out, arise. How about someone get up and arise right now? Praise God. Hallelujah. God wants you to realize you have value. Okay, I need an, uh, a volunteer. How about one of you young men on the front row? Wh whoever gets up here first, you can. Okay, stand in front. I want you to stand around and uh, to the audience and stretch that out. What is that? Can you think of something you can buy with a $20 bill? What? Food. Food. Okay, so he must be hungry right now. <laughs> But you can buy food with a $20 bill. Now, this $20 bill has value. You know, scientists, my background is science. I graduated with a degree in chemistry from LSU in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. But look what I'm doing now. Praise God. This is better. But anyway, scientists have discovered that the human uh, body, the value of the human body is worth about a dollar. If you took all of our physical components and put it in a big container, you know we're mainly composed of water. You even learned that in grade school and different minerals and components, et cetera, and elements. So if you actually took the physical value of that, it's about a dollar. But we know the soul is eternal and it's priceless. And so I want you to take that $20 bill, just kind of ball it up and throw it on the floor. Oh, somebody said, throw it this way. <laughs> okay, now go step on it. Not too much where you will destroy it. Okay, 
There we go. Now pick it up. And I want you to stand back there and stretch it out again. There are some of you might have gone through some things in your background, in your life, abuse, problem, situation, a bad past, and you feel you have been stepped on, abused, and that's what the devil may have done, or people, but it doesn't matter. When God picks you up, you have the same value. And he can go out and buy what he wanted to originally. And God wants you to realize, because for you to arise in new places, you have to realize who you are in Christ. You are his child. He loves you. You have great value. He wants to use you. He even wants to use your testimony and the things that you've been through to help other people in the world. Praise God. You have value. Do you believe that? You know what? Someone needs to go and tell the rapper 50 cent he's worth at least a dollar. <laughs> you have value. Let's give my brother a good hand here. How about you buy you some food? There you go. And some of you other young men are saying, I should have jumped up there. <laughs> I want you to shout out, I have value. Once you settle that in your mind, the devil cannot torment you and tell you you're not worthy. You're not worthy to be used in this ministry. He won't tell you you're not worthy to sing on the, in the choir or to teach Sunday school or to do outreach or to teach a Bible study. He will not tell you you're not worthy to be an intercessor. You're not worthy to be a minister. He will not tell you those things because he cannot touch you because you are a child of God. Praise God. You know, my husband, before he got saved, uh, before we got married, he was in the entertainment business. They used to set up shows for people like Michael Jackson, Prince. He knows people like Steve Hardy, and he was quite wealthy even at a young age. But I'm telling you, he was involved in drugs and alcohol. But he met Jesus, praise God. And you may think, oh my goodness, he knew all of these famous people. But honey, when he met Jesus, he, he got to know the most famous of them all. When he left that lifestyle, he said, I'll never forget it. I had just one whole area that was just a bar. And he said, the Lord spoke to me and told me to get rid of the alcohol. And he said, when I begin to pour it down the sink, I can literally feel a spirit leave the house. And I don't care what spirit. There may be a visitor today or someone who's struggling with some type of addiction or habit. God can deliver you. God filled my husband with the Holy Ghost. He got baptized in Jesus' name. And if you haven't had that experience, God can give it to you today. Your life could be transformed. And God has blessed him ever since. Now, not saying when you come to Christ and when you're saved, when you're born again, you won't have any problems. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. But the difference is, for the just, you're not going through those problems alone. You have God with you as your father, as your Lord and God to lead you, to guide you, to minister to you, and to help you. Amen. That is the difference. I want you to shout out, I'm not alone. And so my husband did go through problems in life. There was one point he was involved in a major car accident. And he was paralyzed from the neck down. And he was in that state for a few days. But he believed God. And God totally healed him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. There was another time in life uh, before we got married. He was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, he had stomach cancer. And he had already had one um, operation and was getting treatment. And then they went in and, uh, and they said, you need another major 
surgery. This was life and death situation. But at this time, he had come to know the Lord. And in his spirit, the Lord was telling him, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to touch you. And so when the doctors gave him that report, and as he was sitting in the office, the doctor told him, I want you to call, uh, I, I'm going, we're going to call you, I'm going to have the office call you, and we're going to make a schedule appointment for you to do the surgery. And my husband, the Lord was moving upon him, and I'm not saying this is for everyone, but you have to be led as the Spirit of God leads you. Sometimes God will deliver you out of situations so you can get to the other side, but sometimes he'll deliver you through the situation to get to the other side. And so he said, doctor, I tell you what, you don't have to uh, call me or have the office call. If I need to, I'll call you. Well, guess what? It's been over 30 years, and that doctor is still waiting for that call. God completely healed my husband. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you need healing today, God can do it as according to his will. My goodness. I feel the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to do anything. God wants us to arise and shine for him and to be a testimony of his glory. We live in a dark world, amen, and people are looking for light, amen. There are so many people who live this life without hope and peace, but they can have hope and peace through Jesus Christ. And God wants to use everyone. He's no respecter of persons. I see children here today. Don't you know there was a little boy, uh, and I could just tell you, oh, my goodness, all kinds of testimonies. We have a kids prayer ministry. We have a youth prayer ministry. We, we want everyone to be involved in prayer. There was a little boy, uh, about four or five years old. His uh, mother's feet were hurting. And, uh, and so he asked, Mom, what's wrong? She said, oh, son, my feet are hurting. I'm tired. And she sat in the chair. And the little boy said, well, can I pray for you, Mom? And uh, she was like, sure. And so in his knowledge, he laid hands on her foot, on, on her feet, and said, God is great. God, God is good. God is great. Lord, we thank you for this food. Because that was the only kind of knowledge of the prayer, of a prayer he was familiar with. But don't you know God healed his mother's feet because of his faith? The Bible says, come unto me. Like a child, children have such faith. God wants to use young people. I could tell you so many miraculous things about what young people. And I encourage you, young people, uh, if you went to NAYC when Brother Cunningham preached, uh, listen to that message again about Gen Z. God is about to raise up an army of young people. And he's going to use you more mightily in these last days, praise God, even in present generations. Praise God. Hallelujah. There was a young lady uh, in the church that I went to when I was a single adult in Life Tabernacle in Houston, Texas. I remember, and I was at that time very much involved in the youth group. She was very much involved in the youth group. Her name was Joanna. And uh, at the time, I think she was 18 or 19 years old. All of a sudden, she got sick one day, and she went to the hospital. And I know I'm telling stories, but these are faith-building stories because I want your faith to be built up because you're rising to that level where the word of faith is coming forth, that God will release the miraculous. And, uh, and so next thing you knew, everything spiraled it just in her life. She was in the hospital, and then they told her that she had an infection that was getting in her blood. It was getting in her organs, and, and by that time, she had jaundice. Uh, on that Wednesday night Bible study, her mother came into church after leaving the hospital. Church had been dismissed, but there were a few ladies who were still in the front kind of just talking and sitting, including Sister Ima Kilgore. That was the church I went to uh, when I was a single adult. And when this mother came in and said, the doctors just told me that Joanna 
uh, everything is, her, her organs are shutting down. She might not even make it through the night. And I remember uh, her mother just crying and said, every mother wants to see her daughter get married. Every mother wants to see her daughter live and to be successful in life. And I'll never forget it. Sister Kilgore, she did not even bend her knees. She just went flat on the floor on her face and started travailing. And all the other ladies, including my, uh, myself, we just got down and we began to pray and touch and agree. And I remember when I got home that night, God gave me a dream. And a lot of times God will show me things in dreams. My mother had the gift of dreams. She saw all nine of her children before they were born. And, uh, and she saw them either as little babies or older children and what they would do in life. And everything has come to pass. My mom is 93 years old and she lives in the Frisco Flower Mound area. And, uh, and so anyway, so I dreamed that night that uh, I saw Joanna, the young lady who was sick, dying. She was at a party. And I saw the balloons. And this place looked like uh, it was a big room. It kind of looked like a hotel area because you can see the reception. There were balloons and flowers. And, and, and I was like, oh, my goodness. And I thought the first thing that came to my mind was I wonder if this is a birthday party. Uh, nonetheless, that means Joanna's going to probably live because she's at a party. And I felt that in the spirit. And so I remember I was so excited. And the next day when I followed up and checked with the mom, Joanna hadn't died that night. I didn't tell her about the dream, but I just said, I'm encouraged. I believe Joanna's going to make it. And the young people, the group, gathered together. They prayed and they fasted. And we all were just involved in it. There is strength and power in unity when you begin to believe and stand for your brother and sister and work together and unify your faith. Nothing is impossible when that happens. And so, uh, sure enough, Joanna just started getting better and better gradually. And in a matter of about two weeks, she was out the hospital and well. And she, and we rejoiced and we said, oh my goodness, this is a miracle. And so a few more weeks passed by. And then I'll never forget it, Joanna's mother called me and she said, you know what, uh, Sister Flo, uh, Joanna was talking to me. And she's so grateful. She knew that God raised uh, her uh, up and to, to live because she was dying. And she said, mom, she said, you know what, we always ask God for things when we have need. And, and it's good. God wants us to ask them. These are requests. The Bible says, let your requests be made known. Amen. God wants to answer prayer. But she said, but we never do we ever thank God more than we ask him. Because a prayer of thanksgiving is a type of prayer too. So she said, mom, this is what I want. I want to have a Jesus party to thank him. Can you believe it? All of a sudden, I didn't think about it and put two and two together until later. But when I was invited to that party, all the young people and other people in the church, and they couldn't hold it in their house because the house was too small. So guess what? They held it in a hotel. And when I went to the hotel, everything was exactly like I saw in the dream. Praise God. And so many of us right now, we're in trials. And we're wondering how we're going to make it. And guess what kind of party you're having? A pity party. But God doesn't want us to have a pity party. He wants us to have a Holy Ghost party. Ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party. Because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Praise God. And I believe it's in your DNA. It's in your destiny. Look at these floors. This is a party church. This is a rejoicing church. This is a revival church. This is a miracle church. God wants you to rejoice. God wants you to rejoice before the battle is over with. Because he's going to give you victory. He's going to give you miracles. He's going to answer prayers. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise God. And guess what? Joanna did get married to a minister. And God is using them greatly in the church.
praise God. And I heard someone was getting married. Who's getting married? Ooh, congratulations. How exciting. You know what? God is interested in every part of our lives, every decision you make. I remember there was a young lady in our church uh, when I was single. Her name was Michelle. And she had prayed for years for her husband. She's like, Sister Flo, what's taking God so long? I've been praying for years, and other people are getting husbands, you know, and this can apply to the men, too, who are looking for good wives. And she's like, where is he? And she was sarcastic. She's like, do I have to, uh, God, will God have to get him from Australia for me to marry? And she was serious. She was sarcasm. And guess what? A year later, she met a missionary son from Australia, and they got married. God has a sense of humor. But he is concerned about every part of your life. He wants to be involved in it. He wants to bless you. And that's the other thing I felt when I was praying for this church. It goes along and synonymous with arise. Because when you arise and believe God and expect and reach out to him, he's going to bless you. Praise God. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And I don't care what you're going through. You may say, well, Sister Shaw, I got married and I shouldn't have. <laughs> I'm having marital problems. I need God to help me. You have to realize marriage is work. It won't be all bliss, you know. You know, uh, it could be so bad. You know, this is a little bit comical, but uh, someone having marital problems. Daddy, a little boy, asked his father, how much does it cost to get married? His reply was, I don't know, son. I'm still paying for it. <laughs> it could be that bad. <laughs> or get this. A recent study, now men will get a kick out of this, shows that men who are married live longer than single men. But they are a lot more willing to die. <laughs> men, you better not say amen. <laughs> You're in trouble when you get home. <laughs> okay, but the women, the women, the women are going to get a kick out of this. How did God make you so beautiful and so stupid at the same time? A frustrated husband asked his wife. Her reply to him was, he made me beautiful so you would marry me, and he made me stupid so I would marry you. <laughs> We're even, we're even now. <laughs> but you know what? I guess both the married men and women will agree to this. The secret to a happy marriage. Everyone's all ears. Remains a secret. Because <laughs> it's work. But God will help you. Amen. I went to Canada uh, a few years ago. And we have an annual conference. It, it's always in November. And I remember it was a ladies' co a conference. It, um, and in this particular conference, it, it's a true ladies' conference. You know you have some ladies' conference and there are a few men in there. But this one was like ladies, ladies. And so I had already been, I think this was my third year there. And I noticed in that whole conference it was packed with women, but only one man in there sitting with a lady and two kids. And so I thought that was a little bit interesting. And, uh, and I remember speaking, and God gave me something specifically to share. And at the end of the service, the, the man comes running up to me, and he says, Sister Shaw, I know you're probably wondering why I'm the only man here and what I'm doing here. He says, well, my wife told me this week that uh, she was going to divorce me. And she also told me she doesn't want to have anything to do with God, anything to do with church. Now, they had not been in the church, but they had been visiting for, I think, about three or four months. But she said she was done. And uh, he said that we've been having problems. My son is autistic. Our finances are falling apart. Our business is falling apart. And, uh, and he said, when my wife told me that, and I heard about this ladies' conference, I begged her. I said, please go. Just give God one more chance. And if you go, I will go also and sit by you. So he said, that's why I'm here. And the next thing I knew, she comes running up. 
full of tears in her eyes. And she said, Sister Shaw, the things that you spoke about the deliverance of what God did, she said, I've never heard anything like that. You mean God could really do things like that for us? Could he do it for me? And I was like, yes, he can. And I encouraged her. And the next night they were back again. And uh, so I spoke with the leadership and encouraged them to kind of plug in with them, get them in church. The next year I went back to the same conference. And, uh, and I didn't see uh, her. I didn't see them anywhere. And I was concerned. And I thought, you know, I need to ask them whatever happened uh, on the follow-up of this couple. And the reason I didn't see them in the sanctuary is because when I went in the reception hall, they were so plugged into church, they were serving food. My goodness. And, uh, and you know, to, to, to fast forward, it, they've been filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name. But before I could even eat, they pulled me in the room. They said, Sister Shaw, Sister Shaw, we got to tell you something. And they were like a happy, newlywed, married couple. They were hanging on each other and hugging each other. And some of you are saying, Lord, that would be a miracle. But God can do it. I saw him. Praise God. And then uh, the husband was so excited. They both were talking at the same time. Uh, uh, he said, Sister Shaw, let me tell you what happened. Uh, God has blessed my business. Our finances took off. And so God wants to let you know to arise, praise God, because he wants to bless you financially too. Some of you might be involved in businesses, and you have been faithful to giving to God. The Bible says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Guess what? God's about to pour it back to you. I don't even know where that came from. That was in my notes, but get ready. Arise and be blessed. And so, and they continue. And then the, the wife said, oh, my goodness. And, and, and they were in church, and, and, and they said, well, you know, our son, uh, they said that he, I enrolled him in Bible quizzes. At school, he wouldn't even talk. I think at the time, he was probably around eight or nine. And, uh, and the, the, the second time in Bible quizzes, he started quoting the word of God. It was a miracle. And then they said, God healed my son of autism. Completely healed. And get this. Here it is about two years later. The pastor himself is telling me this. The district superintendent, Bishop McLaughlin, is telling me this. They said, did you hear about Harry's son, what happened? Because uh, he continued in Bible quizzing. They said that not only did God heal him of autism, he was the number one Bible quizzer in his category in the entire district. Only God can do something like that. Oh, my God goodness. God is a miracle worker. I don't care what's broken in your life. It could be family relationship, marital relationship. God wants us to live in peace and not in pieces. He wants us to live in peace and not in pieces. I had gone to a conference in Wisconsin, and I was talking about unity. It was about 100 people there. And I gave the ushers puzzle pieces to, uh, to, ha uh, to put in the altar area. And then I invited the audience to come up and pray and to hold up a piece of the puzzle and, uh, and to pray to God and to help them to realize that they are an important piece of the puzzle that makes the big picture. And anything that's broken, God can bring back together. And so they prayed. And at the end of service, all of a sudden, uh, this older lady runs up to me and this younger lady uh, looked like a teenager. And both of them were crying. And they said, Sister Shaw, we have to tell you what happened. The older lady spoke first. She said, this is my daughter. We have been in a dysfunctional relationship for years. And my daughter has been out of the home she left two years ago. And I haven't seen her for two years, but we're in the same service tonight. And she said, but when you had us come to the altar, I was way on this side of the altar. I was way on this side of the altar. My daughter was way on this side. But on the way back to our seats, we ran into each other and started talking about the service. And she had her puzzle piece, and I had mine. And as we held it up, I found out the piece that I had fit exactly. 
exactly to the peace that she had. It belonged to that one. We broke down and started crying. And she said, God healed our relationship. And I was back in that district a, a, a year later, and then three years later, and she had moved back home, and that relationship was healed. I don't care if it's with a brother or sister in the family, in the church, a friend, a co-worker. God can heal. God can mend. You forgive. God will help you, praise God. Because we can't have anything in our heart anyway. How are we going to go to heaven? If our heavenly father forgives us, he expects us to forgive others. Amen. Praise God. And I need to wind it up. But God wants us to arrive. I don't care what you have been through. When the devil tries to remind you of your past, then you remind him of his future. Amen. God wants us to arise. He wants us to believe for great things. And I know I've talked about some personal areas, but I want to kind of focus in on the church. Because I believe that you will continue to expand. I believe you will continue to grow. As you go and do outreach, as you put out flyers and knock doors and pray and fast, I already see this building filling up. My goodness, I see it in the spirit. I see people coming through these doors. I see some of these seats being filled. I see them in the altar. Do you see it? Do you believe me? I don't even come here, and I'm seeing this. May praise God. Hallelujah. Your labors are not in vain. Be not weary in well-doing, for you shall weep in due season if you faint not. And I see this in the spirit. And you know God can do anything. You know, let me tell you something that was just miraculous that just kind of just blew my mind. In 2010, when they had General Conference in Houston, Texas, at the time I was serving as the South Texas District Prayer Coordinator. And that's the year the UPCI was believing God for another 3,000 souls being filled with the Holy Ghost. So as a district prayer coordinator, uh, we had scheduled prayer meetings in each section. We started a year out praying and fasting, believing it. And I was going to every section, and we were having meetings. And I remember I went to one particular section uh, in Houston uh, South, uh, uh, West uh, section, and Sister Cindy Castleberry was the uh, sectional prayer coordinator. She said, Sister Shaw, I know the UPCI is believing God for 3,000 new souls to get the Holy Ghost, but we have been praying for 5,000 souls. Is it okay to pray for 5,000 souls? Because, she said, there are going to be people on the Internet listening. They're going to be backsliding. So we're praying for that. Is it okay tonight when you lead the prayer, when we have the prayer, we pray for 5,000 instead of three? And I'm like, sure. There are some of you in this church that your faith, you believe so much more. And I don't care if someone else may not be, they may uh, uh, have arisen this high, but you may be here in your faith. Don't let anything hinder or stop you. If God has given you a vision for the ministry you lead, for the work that you do, for the prayers that you pray, you keep on praying it because God wants to use you. If he can use the faith of a child, he could use your faith to bring these things into fruition. It only takes one to stand in the gap. And here it is. I'm the leader leading them, and the sectional prayer coordinator's vision was greater than mine because I was praying for 3,000 souls in obedience. But they saw five, and I said, sure, let's do it then. Well, lo and behold, I'll never forget it when we started preparing. A week before, we drove, we did a Jericho prayer drive around the convention center, George R. Brown Convention Center. And I remember there was a policeman who was there who was part of the team and a minister. He, we met in the parking lot before we started to do the prayer drive. He literally did a count, and there were 120 people there, exactly the same amount that was in the upper row. And not only that, there was a young man passing by on his bicycle wanting to know what was going on. They told him. All of a sudden, the power of God hit him. He started repenting. He fell to the ground. God filled him with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. Already God was moving. But lo and behold, here it is, the time for general conference and the crusade. And Brother Cunningham was speaking the word of faith. God was moving. I'll never forget it. 
after that general conference, Bishop David Bernard sent out a report. And he said, he said, God did give us another Pentecost with 3,000 new souls filled with the Holy Ghost. But together with backsliders and those on the Internet, over 5,000 people got the Holy Ghost. God wants you to stretch your faith. Amen. Praise God. Today I will do what others will not, so tomorrow I can do what others cannot. God wants to use you. Praise God. God wants to show us the miraculous. He is taking you higher. I don't feel this in every church, but you are there. The leadership of this church, the ministry, the prayers, where you are in the spirit, God is ready to elevate you. My goodness. Mm as a church, to another level. Amen. And that level includes the operation of faith. And that's what I'm feeling in the spirit. That's why he's given me this message. But to go along with it, it's accompanied with blessing. Amen. When you arise to a new level, there will be spiritual blessings. There will be natural blessings. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready to receive it? And y'all have seen miracles, and I'm just showing you in, in just your family bloodline and just being uh, it already in the church. But God wants to take it to a new level. We were in the New England District Conference um, in August in Rhode Island, and uh, Brother Art Wilson, pastor who is the ambassador to the, uh, the United Nations, he was talking about a man, and he showed the picture, who had a withered hand. It was pulled to his side, and how they prayed for that man, and he was totally healed. We literally saw him stretch out his hand. Well, after speaking on that and showing that, there was a man in the audience that ran to me, and he said, Sister Shaw, I got injured on the job. And, uh, and then he said, I have not been able to make a fit for ever since I got injured. It's been weeks. But he said, tonight in the altar and after we saw that, God totally healed me. He was able to make a fist. He was stretching out his hand. Amen. And so it's another dimension of faith. Praise God. And I'm about to close now as we all can stand. Praise God. Because God is doing the miraculous in this place. Hallelujah. It was Brother Stone King. God wants to open up our eyes. He wants to enlighten the eyes of our understanding. I have a friend who's a doctor in Houston. One day she was preparing for surgery, and uh, her eyes were itching and red, so she reached in her purse thinking it was a little tube of hydrox. And when she turned it over and put in her eye, it was a tube of super glue. thinking, oh my goodness, Sister Shaw, how could God even resolve that? There are some things we've gone through. It's like the enemy has shut our eyes tight, and we just can't see. God wants us to have the vision of faith. She started screaming. They rushed to the emergency room to try to dilute it and to help her. And some kind of way she was able, I asked them to send a text request, and we, we prayed. And God did a miracle. They thought she would lose that eye, or she wouldn't be able to see. But the next day, God had healed her. She was seeing perfectly out that eye. And God wants to heal your spiritual eyes. Praise God. Hallelujah. He wants to heal your eyes. God wants to do something in this place. And I feel that miraculous power. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was in my home church testifying about prayer. And I remember about one inch midway from the ceiling was like an explosion, like a light. And there was a glory cloud all over the entire congregation. People worship and praise God. And I remember when I got home, that church had about maybe 60 or 80 people in it. The pastor called me and said, Sister Flo, remember when you testified about prayer and what happened? He said, you didn't know this, but in my office, I had people coming in there with marital problems. I had someone who had cancer. I had someone who had lost his job. 
But he said when the spirit of God came in there, every last one of those individuals have called me or have come by and said God took care of their problem. The lady was healed of cancer. The man had a job. The marriage was reconciled. And praise God. He said, Sister Shaw, I don't have any problems in the church. Can you imagine why? It's because when we begin to get in that higher place, what a pastor or a counselor can take a year doing, a, a month doing, a week doing, a day doing, God can do it in a second by the power of his spirit. And that's what he wants to do today. Hallelujah. He wants to move as the musicians come and begin to sing and to play. So if you have any need, God wants us to arise. And I remember Brother T.W. Barnes said, God confirmed his words with signs following. And God wants to confirm his word here today. Will you arise? Praise God. If you have a need, if you need a miracle, God is calling you to this altar right now. Hallelujah. Reach out. Huh? If you need healing, huh? it's time to arise. Who will arise and come forward? Who will arise and reach out? Who will arise and believe God? God wants to do the miraculous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can do it. God can do it. Hallelujah. I can tell you so much more, but my time is out. I can tell you about, I just came from ABI, and there was a young man of a friend of a student there. He committed suicide, but they prayed. He was dead for a while, but the students prayed, and the uh, dean contacted me, and he told me, the academic advisor, he said, God rose that man from the dead, and it was young people that prayed, praise God, hallelujah. And he's alive, and God has given him a chance. I can tell you about the lady who had a tumor, and when they were operating on her, the doctors took that tumor and began to cut it off. But the tumor began to shrink in the doctor's hand until it disappeared. God's going to do such miracles in this place today. It's going to, my goodness, hallelujah. Sing, musicians. God's doing it. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Where every demon trembles. Believe God. Arise. Where we proclaim your name. God's going to do it. Arise. Do you believe it? This is a house of worship. According to his will, he will do it. From every child, every young person, every adult, every single adult. I don't care who you are, what age you are. God wants to do the miraculous. Come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. In the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus, this is a house of miracles. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. Resurrection power. Your blood runs through our veins. 
your kingdom try.